Good Friday morning, everyone. I hope you're having a good day so far. I have a new tea bag holder project for you today. And if you remember from last week, I did an accordion tea bag holder. And this week I have expanded that holder into a clutch so that it can hold more tea bags. I can see purpose for both, sometimes you don't wanna give as many tea bags, but sometimes you wanna give more of a gift. So I have made some adjustments and this is the Accordion Tea Bag Holder Clutch. It holds 12 tea bags and it still has the nice gusseted design on the side. And um, this time I have saved my stamping for the inside of the clutch. So I just open this up and there is a little uh, place to put your greeting or whatever on the inside. And then we've got the little tea bags right there and it just makes for a really nice presentation. So um, if you want me to hold them side by side, I have one of last week's that I made. Um, they are about the same height. I did make some adjustments though. So the measurements are a little different, of course, the width being one of them. Um, but if you look at the side, um, you'll notice that the one, the small, the one, the smaller one, um, the, the side gussets are a little taller. The reason I shrunk them down on the new one is because I want to be able to take one sheet of 6x6 six six paper and use it for one clutch. So I made a little tweak so we have enough paper for the front cover plus we have enough paper for both sides. So one of these clutches can be made with one sheet of paper and of course some cardstock, but you don't have to cut into more than one sheet of the six by six to make your clutch. So that's why I made some adjustments and I think it actually works out quite well because I think the side gussets still work. Nothing is going to come out of here um, because it's, you know, nice and compact. I also had um, a question um, come in through me um, for from email and I just wanted to address um, some people were wondering what else they could stick in here um, right now for the purposes of this project tea bags really work the best um, Ghirardelli chocolates they are so a tea bag tapers if you take a, a regular tea bag and you have a look at it okay there's thickness at the bottom and it tapers a little thinner at the top. And that's what happens with the tea bag holder too. Um, it's thinner up top than it is on the bottom. So it works really well for tea bags. When you put Ghirardelli chocolates in there, you get like this block at the bottom. So you could still use it. It's just gonna look a little different because it's going to expand. This whole thing is going to be like a box down here. So it's gonna make it look a little different. I think maybe one day I will work with Ghirardelli chocolates and see if I can come up with a slightly different design that looks a little better because when you put six Ghirardelli chocolates in there, it's like a really big block. So um, it works really well for tapered projects. If your um, bags of whatever you wanna put in there are, are taller, then you're just gonna to have to expand the height of whatever um, this part is. So tea bags really work the best for this project. Um, and I think it there's a bunch of different companies that you can use. I drink a lot of, I don't know how to pronounce this, is it Twinings um, or Bigelow tea? Um, I have Stash tea that fits in there. So um, a lot of different brands will fit in there because there's a, a little bit of wiggle room in terms of how big the... Um, how big the space is. So, you know, basically if it's like a typical tea bag that's wrapped, uh, it will probably fit. Not all of them, but a lot of them. Okay, so there's just a little bit of explanation about some of the tweaks that I made. And if you follow me, 
and I hope you're a follower. And if you're not a follower, please subscribe to my channel. I would love that. Um, my little floating body is in the corner of this video somewhere. If you click on that, that will take you to the subscribe uh, page and you can subscribe to my channel. I'd really appreciate it. Or give, some, give me a thumbs up or leave me a comment. That would make everything great too. Um, but if you want a project sheet for this project and for some of my back projects, um, please subscribe to my email list. The link is down below. And on Saturday, I will be sending out a project sheet for this video. On my project sheets, I also do some little tweaks. And I don't know if you notice that if you've ever had a project sheet from someone else, but I cut out my photos from the background. Why do I do that? Why do I spend the extra time? Is because personally, I don't want to spend um, any extra ink. Ink is, is, is expensive. So I don't want to have to be printing backgrounds for things that I don't need because every little bit of thing that you print out, that's ink that's being printed. So I like to cut my, um, my uh, projects away from the background. So it gives it a very clean look. And I hope you appreciate that because I try and save you a little money by doing that um, little increments over time. So um, make sure you subscribe um, so that you can get that project sheet. All right, guys, I would love to have your questions or your input. So um, I'm just really bad at talking to you while I'm doing my project. So if you have comments and questions, please post them. And after I'm done, I'm going to go through them and um, make sure everyone's questions or comments get answered. All right. Are you ready? Are you ready for my new project? Let's switch over to my other camera. All right. I'm going to prop up my project sheet in the background and hopefully I'll follow along in order. Let's talk about, we've already, I've already shown you the clutches, so we'll go over that a little later, but let's talk about the products I used. Um, I'm using the cup of tea bundle. Let's put that aside. The cup of tea bundle, uh, cup of tea stamp set and the tea cup dies. When you purchase the two together, you save 10% um, over the cost of them individually. Um, and so I'm using these um, for the inside. Um, and then I'm also using the Tea Boutique paper. And you're going to need a six by six piece of designer series paper to make this project, as well as some cardstock. And then to cut the flap, I'm using the basic borders dies and so this time I used this one right here um, for my previous project I used this one so I'm starting to branch out and try different um, front openings and this die set if you didn't like the one I chose today guess what choose another one there's six to choose from so it gives you some options um, to play with okay let's prop these up i think i've talked about all the main ingredients so we're going to start with a piece of cardstock and this time the piece measures nine and a half inches by five and a half inches I'm going to grab my scoring board. I do prefer to score my scoring board than my trimmer, but you can also score on your trimmer. And we're going to put the long side, the nine and a half inch side, up at the top. And we're going to score at the one and a half inch mark, the three inch mark, and the six and a half inch mark. Okay, won't put that too far away because we'll need it in a second. And I forgot my trimmer across the room. Maybe I should get more than one trimmer so I don't have to keep running across the room to go get it for my projects. Um, so the trimmer, we're gonna take this six by six piece and we're going to cut it in half at the three inch mark. Okay, and we're gonna reserve 
one of these pieces for the accordings, which we'll score a little later. And then we're going to take this piece that now measures six by three inches and we're going to cut it at the five and a half inch mark. So now I have a piece that measures five and a half inches by three inches and I have a little tiny piece left over um, which I can use on another project or if that's too small for you then you can throw it out. Okay or recycle it better yet. Okay so we're going to adhere this piece over here so you can probably see some very faint lines one and a half three and a half and this was my six and a half inch mark score line so this is going to fit over this end segment the larger of the two end segments and it's going to just glue on top right here um, it's better to cut both of these at the same time when you're running them through the die cut machine. So that's why you want to glue it on now. And we'll just we'll put glue on the side so you can see it a little better. And I'm trying to keep my glue pretty fine, but you want it to cover the whole piece because you want it to stick down at the top. So this is a little different than we did last time because last time our flap was all cardstock and this time our flap has cardstock. Okay. So now we're going to need the stamp and cut and emboss machine. And let me bring this camera up just a teeny tiny bit. You can see I've got my um, handle that I'm going to crank over on the side and we're going to just bring this through and you're going to need your standard die cutting sandwich so that would be base plate platform number one, thin die adapter number two, we're going to need a clear cutting plate number three and then we're going to have our piece of cardstock and you want to center this on your cutting plate from side to side because this die has just enough room to pass. So you want to make sure it's centered so that you can get the pattern of this die centered. So I'm going to line this um, scallop bottom edge just so I can see a little tiny peak of cardstock coming through and just make sure it is um, you know lined up and, and centered. One little thing that does help sometimes is a little post-it note tape. We do have a new bang note it platform um, that I have not I have not gotten it yet. I forgot to put it on my order so it will go on my next order so that we can give it a try but I don't have that yet and I want to give it a whirl for you guys so I'm just putting a piece of post-it note tape or take the top part of a post-it note and just adhere it down just so this will stay in place. Second cutting plate on top and we're gonna come through it's gonna be a bit of a because it's a big straight line it's gonna be a little a little cranky you're gonna to have to really give it a good push to go through and I'm gonna go through and then I'm gonna come back and then let's see if this went all the way through you kind of want to go through and back because you're cutting through two pieces of cardstock let's see I think it went all the way through good if your machine isn't as tight as mine you might need to um, do a second pass go back and forth one more time but I think if you go back and forth with most machines, you will be good. The reason for that is we're cutting through two layers. We're cutting through both cardstock and designer series paper. And then this is the little piece that you're going to be left over with. And I'm going to just throw that away. I don't think I can possibly find a use for that. Okay. So die cutting is done. And now we're going to take this piece and fold it along the score lines. The 
This will become the cover for the clutch. Okay, and it will be looking like that. See, isn't that pretty? Afterwards, we're gonna have all three clutches and you can tell me which one you like the best. So now we have that remaining piece of designer series paper and we're going to bring back in our scoring board. And this piece measures six inches by three inches. We'll put the six inch side up at the top and we're going to score at all the half inch marks. Half inch, one inch, one and a half, two, two and a half, three, three and a half, four, four and a half, five, and then five and a half. Okay, then we'll bring back our trimmer and we'll place this into the trimmer and we're gonna line it up with a one and a half inch mark on the short side here. And we're basically cutting this piece in half. And we'll just cut it in half like that. So now we have two pieces. You can probably see the score marks better on that side, okay? So we have two pieces and they measure six inches by one and a half inches. And both of them have the score marks all the way through, okay? So we want, uh, well, I want the floral pattern on the outside. So I'm gonna start by, um, that pattern is going to have that first mountain fold on the end, okay? And we're just going to accordion fold these down. Try to keep them as stacked as possible. So there's no drifting. Sometimes when I fold this, fold an accordion, it starts to drift a bit on an angle. I'm just trying to keep them kind of stacked on top of each other because that's going to give the best side gusset look because if you start drifting, that will also kind of affect how those little gussets work. So just fold it, fold it, fold it. Okay, so we've got our first little accordion and then we're gonna do our second one. This is such a nice um, look on the side. It does take just a little bit extra time, but I think it's really worth it. It just makes it look so pretty and this time, I, I wanted to choose paper this time, the, the floral paper, because um, last time I used paper that had teacups or teapots on them. And I wanted to show you how pretty it looks with the florals as well. You really can't go wrong with this paper. Both of them are very nice. Okay, so we've got our little pieces. And I'm gonna bring out my silicone mat because what happens is I tend to get a little glue all over the place um, and having a silicone mat here means the glue is going to be on this mat and not on my work surface. Bring in my glue and we're going to glue and create these um, gussets right here. Okay, Doesn't that look cool when it expands out like that? We're gonna create the little gussets now. Okay, so we need seven pieces of cardstock, and I cut these to five and a half by one and a half. But on the five and a half inch side, I actually cut it one sixteenth of an inch less because this holder is five and a half inches, and when the, these gussets come out. If they're just a sixteenth of an inch less than five and a half in width here, they just fit in to the space a little bit better and they don't tend to come out beyond this line right here. They're, they're tucked back a little bit. If you go five and a half inches, it will still be fine, but you're gonna have just a teensy bit of overhang right here. So if you go one sixteenth inch less, it will look a little bit more polished. 
If you have a definite up down pattern, then you're going to want to pay attention to make sure they both face in the same direction. But this time I have an all over pattern, it does not matter. Okay, so we'll take the first end segment and I'm going to put Tombow on that. And we'll take one of our strips and we're going to adhere it right next to the score line. I'm going to show you in just one second. Okay, so here it is. Okay, that half inch is just overlapping. You want the edge of the cardstock is right up against the score line. And then we'll do the same for the other side. Take that end segment, just put some Tombow down the center of it like that. And we're gonna add that right there. Sometimes I find it's really good if you fold over the next one and then you can really press down nicely. Okay, and we've got our first one. That's what it looks like, number one. Then we're going to skip a segment and go to the next one and we'll put Tombow on that one. And then skip a segment and put Tombow on that one. And then we're going to just work with each of these and adhere them one at a time. Each time making sure that you're reaching all the way over to that score line and each time make sure you're pressing down to make sure it doesn't slip. With these longer pieces you're going to have a little bit more tension on them than you did with the smaller accordion tea bag holder. So just keep that in mind. Make sure each strip that you adhere is settled before you move on to the next one. Right to the score line. Press down. Next score line, press down. Each time we're skipping a segment and then putting Tombow on the next segment. Skip and glue. It just takes a little while to get all the segments glued but it's such a cool effect when you pull out or open that tea bag holder and the little accordions ex expand out it's really nice um, you can put this in a purse and take some tea with you it makes a really nice little gift and it looks a little bit like a purse. All right, skip and glue. Making sure to go all the way to the score line. Okay, you can see we're making progress. Just got, got two more. Skip a segment and glue. Skip and glue. Okay, almost there. Okay, so for this last one, we're going to skip and glue, and that takes us to the last segment on the outside, and we're going to put Tombow on that, and this time we don't have another accordion to go over top, so we're just going to make sure that we line this one up with the edge. I'm going to show you what that looks like in a second. There's a little bit of an overhang so that you can kind of pinch this. Okay, I'm gonna show you now. So you can see right here, this one is lining up 
right with the edge of the cardstock. Okay, so this one right here, this one has quite a bit of stretch. It has to get over to the other side. So just make sure you line it up with that edge of the pleat because you want to make sure that it looks good. And I'm just taking that last pleat and I'm squeezing it between my fingers. Okay, so let's move the silicone mat to the side. And now you can see what the little pleats um, look like. All right. Okay, so now let's bring back in our cover. And I'm going to glue this side right here to the back right here. So let me fold this back so you can see. First, we're going to glue to the back bottom. So let's take this and So what I like to do is I like to make sure this is all the way to the bottom. So I'm doing it on my work surface and I'm pressing this back. And I'm making sure it's centered. And it's all the way to the bottom too because we don't want it in the air. And I can kind of press the center of this and then I can press on the side and press on the other side. And look how nicely that fits into the five and a half inch length because we went just a little bit shorter. Oh, I need to turn my phone off. There, okay. So then we're gonna come over here we're going to, this is going to glue to the front, so you just need to expand that to the front, like that. So we need to put Tombow on here. Okay, we're going to stretch it all the way to the front, line it up, and then I'm going to squeeze along here. I'm taking the the first two uh, pieces of white and I'm kind of squeezing them because it's easier than to go into the, the first one. So I'm taking the first two and kind of giving them a little squeeze. Squeeze them on the sides here a little bit. Just make sure it's here nicely. So there is the little gussets and now we're going to take tea bags and i had to kind of raid my um tea bag selection so i don't have a nice pretty matching set but what you can do is tea bags come in all different colors if you want it to look pretty and match your tea bag holder you can go to the store and find tea bags that match exactly or pick the person's favorite tea and put that in there or just put a variety in there and they also sell look for variety packs of tea i think this is one so i i got a bigelow assorted collection and they have that in like herbal teas and black and green teas you can find lots of different assortments at holiday times you can find holiday assortments so um, I'm just going to pop these in here and you're going to need 12 to fit in here. And just working my way. Yeah. I have so many tea bags now in all of my projects that I had to raid my kitchen to get some more. Any tea drinkers here? I'm sure there are, otherwise you might not be watching this project. <laughs> All right, so that's what the 12 tea bags look like. And then you're going to come through and just kind of bring this um, down like that. 
So you have to pick maybe some ribbon that will come across here. And today I'm going to use some of this um, mini ruffled ribbon in the real red. And I'm going to need about 16 inches of it. So let's grab my ruler. That's 12 inches plus, let's measure four more inches over and then grab my um, cutting scissors and let's cut that. And for one of my tea bag holders for the lemon one, I use the window pane ribbon and it's got evening evergreen but it almost looks black so even though my base is garden green um, this is kind of a greenish dark a dark greenish color so it will work with most of your green projects if you want to use that I think this is a really pretty ribbon too and I could have gone either way with this I could I could have done this ribbon but I'm going to come in with this red ribbon and oops going to take this. The key with this is to make sure it lays flat inside here. So because you are going to see the inside of the project. So we'll just bring this together and give it a little first knotted tie. And then you know me, I like to tweeze with my locking tweezers. And then we're going to just give it a little tug. Sorry, probably went off camera there for a moment. Okay, so we've got it like that. And then we'll come in with our, let's shove this a little bit over. And then give it a little cut on the diagonal. That one's a little longer. Okay. All right, so we've got that part. And then I want to create a little closure right here at the front, just like I did with this one and I did with this one. So as I was trying to decide colors today, I thought I would go with um, this this color here that I use, the base color is Sweet Sorbet. It's one of our new in colors. And you know that new in color starter kit is so awesome right now. Um, and this is one of the colors you will be getting both cardstock for and um, ink for if you get the in color starter kit, it's the bonus package. So what I wanna do is I wanna add this little piece on here. And where I got this little piece from is earlier today, because I had a little time, I cut two of the Sweet Sorbet tea bags. These are, these are actually tea bags, but I'm gonna use them for my front closure. And I just ran them through the die cut machine, just like I did with the, when I cut the border here and I cut two of them and then I thought maybe I wasn't quite sure what I would do um, I don't know if I want to do the heart or if I want to do a flower on the front so you know we can have a decision I, I don't know um, we could either do the flower or the heart if you want to let me know in the comments what you prefer I will go with the majority rule on that. Um, so I'm just gonna take this first one and this little scallop length, if you use the same die, if you can count over six scallops, one, two, three, four, five, six, then the next four scallops, approximately like that, and one, two, three, four, five, six. So that is approximately that little penciled in area. That's where I'm gonna put my Tombow. And that is where my um, little tag is going to come down in that zone. 
and I'm just trying to look, I want to have it overhang about the same as that one. Okay, so we've got that little, it looks like a little thing on a purse. And then we're going to back it up on the other side because I didn't want this to be too flimsy. So we're going to back it up on the other side with the other tag. Like that. And that way it will be stronger and thicker. And it will hold together better. So now I'm just gluing that down. All right, so you can see how it's kind of coming together. And then let me have a look. Let's see. Okay, I've got flower, 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 flower. Okay, we're gonna do the flower. <laughs> you guys have spoken. We'll put the little flower on here. Thank you for providing your input. Yeah, it is, you know, it is a floral, so it does kind of make sense that I would put a floral on there. It does. I wasn't sure this morning. I was having one of those days where indecision reigns. Okay, and then we're going to grab some iridescent rhinestone jewels. I thought this would be neutral enough that um, it would fit with all of the colors because this time I wasn't using exclusively um, in colors I wanted to pull out the other colors in the, the paper and use them so I just want to add a flower or a sorry a jewel one of these look at that they're so pretty I have to say they're still my favorite um, right now my favorite little jewels can you see how pretty that is all right and now we need a closure so I got these a while back they're kind of hard to find um, but if you ever can find them these are called um, dual lock coins and these are three eighths of an inch. You can't find these now, but I did find some on Amazon that are um, half inch. You can also use, for my other closure the other day, I just used thin um, Velcro um, um, dots. So those work really well as well. The one thing I like about these ones is you need um, two of each, but they make a very satisfying clicking noise. Um, so you just peel one off. And I'm going to put one right on here. And then you need another one. You just peel off. I finished one strip. I've got them sitting in my in, in my Amazon box because I, I don't like to run out of things. But these are kind of a nice little closure. <laughs> the backing doesn't want to come off. Okay, I'm going to take the whole thing off. And then I'm going to pull the backing off of there. All right, maybe it would have been easier to remove the, there we go. All right, these hold really well. They've got a really great adhesive. So I'm just gonna click them together. Okay, so they're sitting there and then I'm gonna stretch this over top and I wanna kind of keep my closures about the same stretchiness. So I'm gonna press down on there and then I'm going to open it up. Okay, so now we've got the little dots on both sides. And then when you put them together, you can they kind of click together. There. You can kind of hear the... I, I moved it over to my microphone so you could hear the little click. So it kind of clicks together into that little, you know, thing. So now what we want to do is decorate the inside. So let's grab a couple pieces. I pre-cut a solid teacup out of the petal pink cardstock. 
I die cut this piece out of basic white cardstock. We're going to layer these together. And I'm just putting a little bit of Tombow on the edges. All right, and then we're going to adhere these two pieces on top of each other. Okay, a very subtle but pretty teacup. And then I've taken a piece of basic white and this measures four inches by half an inch. And I'm going to take my banners pick a punch and I'm gonna banner punch one of the ends like that. Turn it to the left and I'm going to take Sweet Sorbet, one of the new in colors. And I'm going to take this greeting that says, thank you for your friendship. And just ink it up, line it up and stamp it on there. Okay, the reason I'm using the red ink rather than the petal pink is petal pink is a very light color and given the size of this font, um, it would be kind of hard to read. So I wanted to go with a brighter font color. So I'm going to just add a bit of Tombow to this end of this piece and then we'll just add that kind of nesting onto there. When I hold it up, I just want to make sure this is parallel and this is parallel to my eye at least. And then we'll come in, open this up, and we're going to scoot this right in there. And now we can take this and just kind of center it and then press it down. And so now there's that little greeting on the inside versus having the teacup on the outside. We just did a kind of a little bit of flipping around with where we put the paper and stuff. When you open this up, because this doesn't have paper on the bottom, you know, when you open this one up, oh, there's all my tea bags gone. I had to move all my tea bags around, but you've got tea bags here. Let me steal one of the tea bags from here so we can get an idea of what that looks like. Let's stick one in here. Okay. So, you know, you've got your little um, pattern paper on this one, so it looks nice. But if you open this one up and there wasn't this teacup here, it would look a little plain. So by having this be a different color and some ribbon and this across, then it adds a little bit to your little holder. And then you can close it up. And there you go. We've got some different tea bag clutches, all different colors. They're very pretty, huh? And let me bring in the ones from last week. Last week I used in colors and I used the in color ribbon. Okay, so we've got some different ideas. <laughs> We're trying to center them on here. Different ideas for um, the little tea bag holders and um, tea bag clutches. I don't know. What do you think? They're both cute. They both serve different purposes. Um, I'm going to put these little guys away. Why don't you tell me which of the new ones that you like? Which color do you like better? And, you know, um, I used the tea bag themed paper on the last set, but look at how pretty 
the florals are the little lemons. Um, there's a lot of lemon teas, teas that have lemon, green tea with lemon, lemon and ginger, uh, black tea with lemon. So there's a lot of different um, things with lemon. So I know you're gonna have um, a use for for the the lemon paper. So those are the three that I created today and I hope you will enjoy them. And there's like the inside and what it looks on the like on the inside. So what do you think? Do you have any questions at all? Please let me know. And um, what I do when I create this video, I put all the supplies in the description of this video. So you don't have to go too far, go too far to find it. Just keep in mind, the little description looks like about one sentence. You need to click on show more um, and then it's going to open up a bigger um, description and that's where you're going to find all of the links that I'm talking about today including the description to this video um, including um, the link to my blog and on my blog I have a clickable supply list with photos and more photos of my project and everything like that and don't forget to subscribe to get my project sheet if you're not already a subscriber and this month I have these cute little heart pearls as my um, free gift of the month if you spend $50 with me using the host code N24AF9T6. That is for May 2022 only. Um, you're gonna get these cute little heart pearls and you can color these with stamp and blend. So that's kind of a fun thing. And um, if you, purchase at least $15 with me, you are going to get a choice of tutorial from my tutorial collection. And those tutorials are paid tutorials that are not free. So I'm going to go through um, and see if you have any questions or comments or anything that I can address while you're still here. And let's have a look. Good morning, Bear Blue from Tennessee. And it's spring like in Tennessee. You know, uh, when we lived in Tennessee, um, May was a month where they held a lot of festivals because it was hot in Tennessee in May, I think, at least in Memphis it was. Um, but it wasn't as hot as it was going to get in June, July, August, and even September, and sometimes even October. So um, they had a lot of festivals, so May was a really fun time, but boy, it was pretty hot already um, in Tennessee in May. Um, today here, we're gonna, it's gonna be warm here today too. Um, we have a little bit of a heat wave coming on. It's gonna be, um, I think it's gonna be in the 80s today here. I, um, I think in Celsius, so I, I would tell you the temperature in Celsius and you would think I was crazy, so I'm not gonna do that. Um, but, um, well, for you who are Celsius people, it was, it's going to be like, I think 29 degrees Celsius. So that's significantly warm here for Massachusetts. Good morning, Ellie. Oh yeah. And she said it will be between 85 and 90 degrees Fahrenheit today. So yeah, it's warm. Um, oh, Ellie, you just bought some special tea bags yesterday. Oh, how fun. I hope you get to make this project. That's great. Good morning, Karen from cloudy New Jersey. Oh, I hope that the sunshine comes out later. I'm, I have great hope for the East Coast today. Good morning, babe. Um, and thank you, Karen. She says it's so cute. Good morning, Marty. And she says it looks cute. Good morning, Denise from South Dakota. She says this clutch is a great idea. Love the smaller one too. There's uses for both of them. I thought I'd give you options, right? Good morning, Deborah. And she says, a wonderful project for a game. That's so sweet. Um, oh yeah, Marty was saying that a Lipton cup of soup um, would be an interesting thing to put in there. Uh, but I know for a fact that Lipton cup of soup is larger. So you would have to do a little bit of shifting of measurements. And I don't even know if you would have enough height so um but there are some creative things you could do you could um 
um, do the flap out of a separate piece of cardstock. So there's options if you wanted to do cup of soup. And if you do a cup of soup, you might not, they're a little thicker. So you might only want to make a few gussets rather than having six spots. So I would probably tweak the design a little bit. And that would make a really nice little get well package. Um, Twinnings is my favorite tea, Denise says. I brew Lipton black tea for iced tea. Oh yes, yes, my mom taught me how to do that. When I was um, a girl, we would, um, she would brew tea and then we would um, put it in the, the fridge and let it cool down and, you know, make your own iced tea. It's the best kind because you can decide whether or not to put any sugar in it and um, that way you can make it just to the perfect sweetness or make it totally black and not have any sweetness in it at all. I'm such a weirdo. I drink hot tea all year round. Um, I don't really drink super cold beverages. <laughs> You can see how I had problems in the South fitting in um, where everyone, most people, I shouldn't say everyone, likes to put ice and everything. And it's kind of understood if you serve someone a drink, you just put ice in it. Um, here, since I've lived in the North again, um, you always ask people here if they want ice in their drink. In the South, you just put it in and the few people that didn't want it, that was like you were kind of in an anomaly because everyone likes their beverages cold because it's so hot outside. But for some reason, my body doesn't like the cold. It's just never, I've never liked cold beverages. So we'll, we'll take, except maybe for milkshakes. I'll make an exception for that. But don't get to have too many of those these days. All right, I digress. Good morning, Phyllis. Good morning, Janine. Um, oh, Marty says, this is the part that would make her nervous and that was gluing the dividers in. So my suggestion to you would be to take some paper um, or even computer paper, or take some paper that you don't really care about and practice. Because this is what, what makes your stamping better, makes your paper crafting projects better, is practicing. Um, I'm in the process right now of making my thank you cards for last month, and I'm making 50 of them. When you make 50 of something, you get a lot of practice. And after you've gone through a few, you're like, oh, I, I need a shortcut for this. So you start thinking up how you can make yourself little shortcuts. So practice, practice, practice. Use some paper you don't like and make one up first and, and you will get better. Make a couple. I know it's a pain to maybe have to make the project before you make the actual project. But if, if you're worried about messing up, don't use your good paper right away. Practice my advice for the day. I that's that's the advice that all moms give to their kids. Practice it. Practice tying your shoes, you know? And as adults, we forget that if we're trying something new, we need to practice as well, right? Um good morning, D. Um and Cindy's driving this morning. Please drive carefully, Cindy. Good morning, Connie from Denmark. Oh, D says Bigelow Earl Grey is your favorite. I wish I could send it to you because um, Earl Grey is not my favorite. I do not like, I think it's the bergamot in it. It's not, for some reason, I just never made peace with it. Although I made peace with green tea, so go figure. Marty says she loves tea. Um, Twining's Lady Grey is your favorite. And that, I think, also has bergamot in it. Um... Oh, Republic of Tea. I've never heard of that um, brand. I'll have to look it up. Oh, that's probably why, because it doesn't come in envelopes. Interesting. Bear Blue says, wow, this tea drinker is going to make this for my stash of tea. stash of teas. Awesome. I'm glad you're going to make it. Um, D says, my knot is perfect. What advice do you have for getting the knot to lay flat instead of looking like you're seeing the backside of the knot? Okay, I'm going to switch my camera over. 
and let's grab something some ribbon and let's grab oh i need some need a couple of pieces of cardstock okay i'm just gonna grab a couple of pieces of cardstock to just tie something around so first of all locking tweezers really help because they give you the time to all right i did not put my locking tweezers back they are in my pile up of stuff okay so let me show you how I get my knots to lay flat. And this was learned from tying tons and tons and tons of bows over and over and over again, or tons and tons of knots. I don't tend to use a lot of bows because bows are really hard to tie onto um, a piece and make them look all uniform. I, I use a bow maker if I'm gonna use bows and then um, put them on afterwards. So um, just, Basically, you cross over however you want, okay? And then you're going to tweeze your knot. All right, so let me give myself a little length. So when I come over and I do my, my knot, you're gonna kind of bring it in and you're gonna see, I'm gonna bring this down in a little bit more. So you're going to see as you're bringing your knot together that this knot right here, this piece of ribbon is going to be in front. So I'm not going to pull on that one. If you pull a little bit on that one, you don't want to tighten that one first. You want to tighten this one that's going underneath first. Okay, so you're going to pull on that one. So this top one remains prominent. So the, the nice thing about the locking tweezers is you have time to play with your ribbon and you wanna always look for that piece that is in front and um, you're not gonna pull that one tight first. You're gonna pull the other one tight first. And then you pull the, the other one with the front knot and then you can unlock and then just still pull on the one that's underneath first and then you're going to get that look of the knot that you want. Um, so that is my um, little advice for that, for getting the little um, knot flat. What you'll do is grab yourself some ribbon and just practice. I've just got two pieces of the thick basic white cardstock and, and try practicing it that first. Um, and just take your time and pull on both of them and see which one is pulling which side of the ribbon and you can figure that out. I hope that helps a little bit, um, but practice and let me know how you do. Okay, let's see. Um, um, Elise says, great summer beverage. Martha Stewart iced tea. Just throw five to six herbal and flavored tea bags together in hot water and serve over ice. That sounds wonderful. Or if you don't like ice, um, you can also just make it. And when it's cooled down enough, put it in the refrigerator and then serve it cold from there. Thank you so much for everyone's advice on um, the flower versus the heart. Um... Janine loves Barry's Irish tea. And that is a really good tea, except I think it comes not in little, um, little bag, um, sealed bags. So that would be not so good for this project, but that is a good tea. Um, this is a treasure trove gift for tea lovers. Dee says, awesome. Um, so D, yes, you could use there. Some people love to use magnets. And um, so you could definitely do like a little, um, the little earth magnets as well. I really, you know, the Velcro is very much more attainable and um, inexpensive. Um, these little dual lock dots, if you can get them, um, they are great because they kind of click together and they're very, very strong, um, very strong. Actually, they use them in industry for things like that. So I think that's why they're not as available. They really should make them for the paper crafting industry. 
Okay, um, let's see. Ellie says, is the basic borders die still available? Yes, it is. When it, something's current, um, I will only show current projects maybe two or three years from now if someone's watching this video, that die won't be available. But at the time, I always use currently available products. And yes, the basic borders dies did carry over. They are in the annual catalog, so you can still get them. I did not use them last year. I just got them recently. I don't know why I did not use them. Um, now I love them and you will you will be seeing them on more of my projects. They have a lot of nice little shapes. Um, okay, Pat asked if I could post a link to the closures. Yes, I can post a link to um, the closures that I used today. Um, they may sell out. I don't know. Um, I I'm going. I have them sitting in my Amazon cart right now, um, debating whether or not I need more. Um, they are half inch ones, but um, the ones that I bought before can't get them in the same spot. These ones were three eighths of an inch, so the half inch ones are just like um, one eighth inch bigger. So they will also work for this project. Um, Okay, and Deborah says, yes, the basic borders dies are on page 150, 169 of the catalog. Um, oh, thank you guys. You are answering all my questions for me. Um, Kathleen says, really cute tea bag holder. I love everything you create and you are such a great instructor. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. And that comes from me not how I, knowing how to do things in the past and me wanting to be a crafter and not knowing how. So I always want to try and teach you those things that I may have had trouble with in the past and so that you can create these things too. I want everyone that has the products to be able to create just like me. Uh, Marty sh says she loves them. The green and yellow is her favorite. Um, Dee says you can make them in masculine um, themes because men love tea too. Um, Cindy thanks me for sharing. Ah, Connie says she loves the last one I made. So that was the um, this one. Love it. Um, Janine says she loves every piece of that paper. Yeah, the tea boutique paper is just gorgeous. Dee loves the lemon one. Um, Amy loves the lemon one. Hello, Amy. Um, oh, and Cindy says there are coffee bags similar to tea bags for the coffee lover. I have not seen those. Um, Marty says she drinks iced tea all year round. Years ago, people thought I was crazy. You know what? These days, because we have the ability to keep things hot and cold and our homes hot and cold, you know, we have to do what makes us happy. If you like cold beverages, yay. And I like hot beverages, yay. Everyone can do what they want, right? Um, Bear Blue says, I'm not a sweet tea drinker, hot or cold. I try, I have a sweet tooth, but I try not to put any sweetener or sugar in my beverages because it's just a lot of sugar going down quickly. Um, I drink a lot of water. And then my um, secondary drink, I probably drink two cups of tea a day, but green tea and then no, maybe three cups because I have a cup of green tea uh, at lunch too so and then I have a herbal tea before bedtime all right um amaretto I will post a link for those closures okay I know they're very intriguing you know I got something in the mail once with that closure and then ever since then I have wanted to have it because I love the little click it made it so click it just makes me very happy. Um, so I will post a link to the little um, closures that I used. Um, Dee says, thank you for the demo on the knot. It makes so much um, better.
better sense knowing that you need to keep the bottom in place stationary and pull the top one. Great. All right, guys, I hope you have a fabulous sunny weekend and I will be back here next week. Tuesdays, I go live on Facebook on my business page and Fridays, I go live on YouTube at 10 a.m. Uh, if you made it this far, I hope you've subscribed to my channel. Give me a thumbs up if you like this and leave me a comment or a question if you have one. Have a great weekend, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.